David? David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Uh, what impresses you about Jason Peters at this stage of his career, and why bring him in? Well, I think just like any player, I mean, you have a chance to, to look at the video and obviously have a tremendous amount of respect for what Jason's accomplished throughout his career. But, you know, going back, watching the uh, the video of, of his time in Chicago, um, you know, is it is definitely a opportunity of high mutual interest. You know, and, you know, he'd love to finish his career here in, in, in Texas. And um, so uh, we had a chance to visit, you know, late last week and, and through the weekend. So he will, uh, he'll line up and... Uh, we'll kind of just bring him on along a little slowly today. We'll just do individual, so he'll practice today. And as a follow, what what is the timetable on him as far as getting him ready? Let's see how practice goes today. You know, so we'll just get him back out there and you know, kind of take up a ramp up type mindset, uh, just just to let him get back into it. Glad you're forward start telegram. What does this mean for Tyler Smith, and how does this initially affect him at, at tackle, and could it mean he go back to guard? Oh no, no! I mean, we're you know, once again we're, you know, we're, this is about adding depth and and uh, bringing another excellent player into your program. So um, you know, we'll just you know, it's uh, to me these are two separate you know s separate topics, and 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 this is just more about add adding a you know a future Hall of Fame player to your lineup. That's our to your football team. So just you know, you guys can take a word and twist it. I've, not that it's ever happened to me before. Yeah. Uh, Todd Archer of the ESPN. With, with Peters and being 40, does the ramp up look different than a guy who's younger, maybe been around a camp? I'm not sure what do you mean different. How much, how long? Age, or? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, you know, that's that's really, I know it was part of my conversation with him. And, and I think you, just like any player that's played as long as he has, I mean, you, you're talking, you know, you're well north of 200 plus games, you know, close to 300. So. Um, you know, that's, you know, his Wednesday will definitely look different than the young, third youngest team in the league's Wednesday. So, I mean, I think that's just common sense. And uh, so, yeah, that'll definitely be the approach with Jason. Skyder Dixon with the AP. Did you feel like this move was inevitable based on the situation, or is it this, this particular uh, opportunity was the right one? You know, it's an excellent opportunity for us. And I, I think these situations are fluid. I, I mean, to me, this is really how. Um, the business works. This is really how we operate. I mean, we're always talking about players. I mean, this is, you know, this this is something. You know, the timing of it is is not not great because obviously we have to, you know, we have to make a move here, and uh, you know, we'll we'll get that to you when you know, when it comes about. But uh, you know, so yeah, this is this is just more about uh, just staying fluid and staying active, and because you know this this thing about building your roster up, it, it's a year round deal, and that, that's always been our approach. Uh, with uh, do you make this move if Tyron doesn't get hurt? Is it something that would have been on the radar finding a swing? I mean, tackle? hypothetical. I mean, I mean, Tyron is hurt, so I mean, it's just once again. I mean, you always have, you're always looking at every position. Uh, you're you're always looking at different opportunities. You know, then there, you know, there, then there's another component of finances, and you know, and then you know, young guys, reps. You know how the season went, where where we are. So I mean, all those things factor into trying to strengthen your football team. Beyond, beyond the talent and, and the uh, resume that he's had, I know last year in Chicago he was talking about at this stage of his career, willing to pass along what he's learned, be a mentor sort of thing. Does that play a big role when you have these discussions of bringing a guy in at this time? I mean, definitely, and uh, very appealing too. I mean, when you have a chance to sit down with Jason and just what he brings to the table, what he brings to the offensive line room. So, yeah, all, all that I have is part of his value, and, it's, and that's why this is a, just such a great fit for us and for him. So um, we do have a lot of young offensive linemen that, that will be, you know, benefit from his mentor, mentorship. Switching to the Tampa opener. The opener last year, you guys were underdog a little bit. I, you know, I'm sure you obviously expected to win. But the way you all played in that game, even though you lost, was that a springboard, do you think, for what kind of happened early in the season? I think it was just more of a, uh, you know, an identification of who, you know, who we are and, and you know where we were as a football team. September football is you know has some very distinct characteristics to it. Um, so you know playing down there, uh, you're playing in the kickoff game. So you know there was a lot a lot of extra that goes into that game. So uh, you know playing outside, and, you know in the heat and so forth. And, and I thought our guys did a, a, an excellent job. You know coming out of training camp and going into that game with a lot of confidence and. 
in, in total belief that you know we were going to win the game. So it, it didn't turn out that way. So I, I think it's just really showed you where, where we were as a team. Um, you know, and every year is different, uh, but there are some similarities uh, to our training camp uh, production. You know, I think we've had a very productive training camp, and um, you know I'm looking forward to this week preparation, line up and competing against these guys. Dave Lothenberg, Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Um, a lot more manipulation to the roster when you get the cut down and all that. My guess is when you came into the league, there were 43 or 46 guys and no practice mm -hmm. squad. Now you got 69 in the building. So has it become easier or more difficult for, for a head coach when you're looking at who's going to be here, who's going to be there, knowing you can get a lot of these guys back to the practice squad, including now 40-year-old guys? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's definitely um, – there's more, there's more to it. I don't know if it uh, – you know, there's definitely benefits uh, to, to having a team that, you know, back in the 90s where, you know, th those teams, you know, hung together for a long time, you know, six, seven, eight years. Uh, you're, you know, the, the pressure of your number one or, you know, first and second round, you know, it wasn't a big deal if they didn't play for, for a couple of years. So, I mean, it, so the whole landscape has changed dramatically. Um, and I think clearly this this roster structure is what, what the NFL needed. Uh, you know, forget, forget how we, it came about, whether it's the pandemic, um, you know, going through all that. But, you know, if you truly want to be a draft and develop program uh, as we are, the, the ability to have 73 players in your building and continue to practice the way you do in training camp is vital. Um, because, you know, how, how are you going to grow your younger players if you don't have the opportunity to practice them the right way? And, and it's, and I'm going, here I go again talking about padded practice. I mean, you still get one a week, uh, but there'll be things that we do in those practices that, you know, it's not just for the vets, it's for the continuation and development in the area of technique and fundamentals of our younger players. And so i uh, got a lot of experience doing it, but um, I am very, very impressed, and, and I think it's definitely what we needed as a league, uh, the, the ability to keep 69-plus players uh, in your building. I, I, think it's, uh, I, think, I think it definitely helps the game. Nikki Mendoz, Cowboys.com. Uh, last year against the Bucks, you didn't have Zach Martin, Viadish, and Nathan McGovern were younger. How much more comfortable, if that's a word you like to use, but how much better do you feel about the interior offensive line this time going up against him? I think the biggest thing is you'll see the, the operations cleaner. You know, I, I think, you know, just something um, as simple as cadence, you know. Uh, so, uh, it, and definitely something that you know, playing on the road is playing, you know, playing it at home. So, I think that's the first thing that kind of jumps out to me, you know, as far as your question. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's that's part of the, you know, that's part of the equation. I think sometimes people tend to overlook, um, you know, yeah, it's, you know, just because you don't add new players or new names or you know, to your roster, I mean, you got to remember the, de you know, the development of those second, third, fourth year players. I mean, that, that's a huge factor. And moving the needle, moving your team forward. So, and, and that's where we feel like we've made some gains. Newy Scruggs, NBC Five. Um, I don't know if it was the first or second time you met with the South Oxnard. You had said um, early on in the year that the young players would have a, a, a big determining factor in, in where, you know, where this team went here. Um, what you're feeling still on that now that you're here at week one? Well, I was hoping that uh, my statement would would be absolutely true, but it was in November, December. But you know, it's. Uh, it's going to have to be September now. So I mean, we're going to have young players that are be a big part of this game, and and um, you know that's that, that's that's how we're built, and uh, we have great confidence confidence in it. We'll, you know, we'll play a lot of players. September football, you know, talked about it some today in a team meeting. You know, if you look over the years, you know, something that we've always felt that you know we, in, in the terms of what we call unscouted looks. I mean, they'll, they'll be up to thirty five percent of the plays. In all three phases uh, for both teams, um, that you know either team has shown um, this look for quite some time, or it'll be a variation, or it'll be a wrinkle. Uh, you know, both teams have had the whole off season to to evaluate their scheme, uh, to to get into the variations and and protection of of their you know base concepts that they really truly want to live in. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of new wrinkles, and that'll go on through the whole month of September. That's that's been the norm. So, and I think really what that does. To you is 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 make you really really um, just 
knuckle down and, and, and worry about your game. Don't worry about them as much as you know worrying about your own concepts. Keep your own house clean. And that's really what we spent last week on. We spent more time last week probably on South Scott and just you know kind of introduced Tampa Bay. So because um, obviously just like they have, we've had the whole off season to look at them and, and have a pretty under, you know strong understanding how they want to play and and how we feel they're going to try to play against us. So. Um, we'll have a good week of preparation, but you know this this time of year is really about you know making sure you get your house as clean as possible and and and, and make sure you get off on the right foot. Thank you. Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. Uh, moving over to the injury front, is Jordan Lewis expected to practice today? Any other injury updates? We'll, uh, we'll bring Jordan on slow. I know he had really good work last week uh, with Britt, but you know the goal is to kind of introduce him. Today and, and, and hopefully have him cleared, you know, by the end of the week is is the goal. But we'll see how he does in the pre-practice part. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Your first two years, you had the pandemic and then a little bit of virtual last year. Is, is this back to normal for you in terms of football stuff and that kind of thing? Yeah, definitely uh, back to normal. It's you know we're the only ones working on Labor Day, so that definitely feels normal. Um, but no, it's. Uh, yeah, it, it's you know what's nice about last year, uh, you know, it was as close to normal as you know as we could get, uh, so we, we were able to have some, you know, solid comparables. You know, frankly, I, I don't even look at 2020, you know, when I'm trying to do comparables of you know whether it's scheduling, productivity, you know, uh, technique and, and fundamental development. It, it, it was just such a different different year. So. Um, but that's why I feel good. I feel really good about what we accomplished in training camp because you know I, I think we've built a really good foundation for this upcoming season. Uh, Mike, you go back to the <coughs> excuse me the unscouted looks. Is that just stress the importance of your rules holding up because you won't have been able to wrap it? Absolutely. No, I'm well said. I mean it's it's all about believing really you know what you start in the spring is you go back and you you put everything in based on your concepts. You know you do conceptual learning. Conceptual teaching and conceptual, you know, practices where you're just really, you know, getting everybody to understand, you know, the concept. You know, whether it's playing cover two and and have everybody in the perimeter group, you know, work the middle read, work, you know, work the monument, you know, work the hook. So, so you know, you really have that opportunity to teach it conceptually, and then, you know, training camp and and really you start in the OTAs is more about, you know, getting the installs taught and 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 learning things more by plays and situations and so forth. So. Um, that, that's the normal teaching progression, and, and and frankly, it's the right way to go because you know you're you're going to see some things in the first three or four weeks that you, you haven't seen yet. So this league's about trends; it always has been about trends, and you'll see variations that'll come out of you know last you know this past off season's um, you know evaluation process and how people install and you know copy new wrinkles and fit them to their team and how you're highlighting you know certain personality you may have had. Last year, or it's different, you know. Or maybe you may have lost from last year, so all those things play into how this how these seasons start. Mike McGuffin, Dallas Morning News. CD. So let me ask you this, uh, Jory, do you have a fine policy here for the media coming in late? I told him Mike Fisher's in charge of the fine. Is that correct? There you go. No? Okay. Just trying to hold accountability here. I mean, it's obviously very high. It's a two-way street, I'm told. Sure. Yeah. Sure. CD spoke during this offseason about the about his need to improve in some of the mm -hmm. details of his position. Um, I was curious what gains you've seen him make in that area that he hopes is a difference for him this year. I mean, I, I mean, you really gotta, um, you know, really gotta love his his path. I mean, obviously, you know, very high draft pick. You know, come in here to a very talented receiver group, and and you can see right away that he, you know, obviously can play inside and outside. You know, primarily played in the slot so much as you know his his first year and had had some you know flanker work. So now you're seeing the third year where he's able to play you know every position inside outside, move him around so forth. And and frankly, it's going to be needed. Uh, you know, we fully anticipate him to be targeted. You know, as far as you know double teams and things like that. So you know that's all part of our thought process too. You know, and and wouldn't be surprised Sunday night if that that was their approach. So. Um, you know, this is all part of the plan uh, for his development of being able to play him inside and outside. So I mean, he he has the complete the complete um, skill set that you're looking for. And uh, you know, this this is he's the guy. You know, and uh, that's what your that's what your flanker looks like in this system. And and our, you know, our our job is to make sure he gets the the opportunities to perform. 
you kept him under 53. When do you anticipate Gallup ramping up his work with the team, doing individuals and things like that? He'll be in the rehab uh, group this week. That's that's all really I can tell you. But he's um, you know he's hit every target uh, to date. Uh, looks really good. I mean every. Every uh, medical report is uh, extremely positive about Michael. And Calvin Joseph is he didn't practice last week. Is he still dealing with the concussion uh, stuff? Uh, he'll, he'll go through the prehab group early, and then we'll, we'll try to work him in. Uh, Mike, last year, uh, Tampa Bay, Bruce Sanders was the head coach. Now Todd is uh, he's the coach there. What are you anticipating? And then also, um, this is his second opportunity as head coach. You've gone through that. What goes through your mind the second time around? On what you want to make sure you get right? Well, I think so much, you know, I know for me personally, the second time around is, you know, you, you kind of just have a chance to redefine your do's and don'ts. I mean, and and I, I think, you know, one thing Todd has always been extremely consistent, if you look at his career, is it just, just the way his defenses have played. And it was no different when he was a head coach. So uh, they're going to schematically challenge you. They're going to be aggressive. Um, they do a really good job in the areas of fundamentals, and I think you, you know, statistically that's reflected in you know how they take care of the ball. But they're number three in takeaways last year, so you know that's a, that's a, always been a big part of his his play style and, and what his defenses you know bring to the table. So um, yeah, I mean I have a lot of respect for him and competing against him as a coordinator, and you know, and, and I think just really the second time around is. You know, you just have a cleaner vision of what you want to do. And, you know, him and Bruce have been together forever. And there'll be a lot of similarities in their program. Mike, it's, it's game week. We, we talk, you know, obviously that's what we're here. Um, what's the mindset of this team, the excitement of this team, yours as well as the team? Is I mean, we're ready to go. I mean, we're ready to get going. I, I think, you know, our um, you know our training camp plan was different, you know, and, and there was, uh, you know, there's, there's some uncertainty to, to all of us. Uh, we've never practiced that way before. You know, we've never uh, gone through the, you know, where your ones didn't play in games. So, you know, I, I think we definitely, you know, hit the target what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, so our, our practices, you know, like today we have five team periods, four of them are competitive. Um, so I, I think that tells you where our mindset is. Uh, you know, we just want to keep our environment as, as competitive as possible and uh, keep working on the things that we feel are going to help us be successful Sunday night. So, um, you know, I, I would say we're, we're operating with a lot of confidence right now. It's more business-like than, than, than excitement for, for I me. Mean, oh, definitely. I, I think that's what this week brings. Uh, you know, it's, you know, one thing that is different uh, for me uh, as a head coach, um, I've always been able to, to get the team regimented on an in-season work schedule. Uh, you, you know, usually two weeks of that uh, before you, you go into the regular season. Um, this year we have not just because of the, you know, the way the schedule fell with the bye week and so forth. So um, you like to, uh, um, you know, flow and regularity, I think, is very important. Uh, it's, it's something, obviously, you, you want to get into the ebb and flow of the whole season. Uh, so uh, I, I think, like anything, uh, we're all creatures of habit. You know, we, we want get to get into a normal flow of the week. And, you know, that's why we're, we're treating Monday as a bonus day, and then they'll, up, then they'll be off Tuesday. And it's really to get these guys into the normal flow. Because you don't want this week to feel like it's three weeks long. And that, and that can happen very easily. You know, and, and we've all been there. You, you know, I, I think human nature is like, oh my goodness, you get, you get eight practices for, for your first game. And that's, and that's, not, that's not really realistic. Um, so you know, if you look at last week, you know, we, had, we were able to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but you really were only able to really work Thursday. Uh, because Wednesday we were still, you know, in the process of getting our practice squad back. So we, that's why we really tailored the, the the practices after just making them as competitive as, as possible, and, and don't get so caught up on exactly making it all about Tampa. So, and I, I think that that approach has, has worked very well for me in the past, and that's that's why we do it. We'll finish with Michael. When going up against those unscouted looks early in a season, how? advantageous is it when you have a second year defense with communication and scheme familiarity is stronger to combat whatever unexpected might come on Sunday? Uh, definitely. I mean, it definitely helps you. And, it, and it's really what we're going to rely on. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it just goes by what I said. You know, we, we accomplished what we set out to accomplish as far as how we went about it in training camp. Um, you know, we keep track of everything. You know, every, every missed assignment, every mental error, uh, you know, just the fundamental work, you know, the game management reps and so forth. So. Feel really good about the way the team went through training camp. Uh, we got we got a lot of work. Actually, frankly, we got more work done uh, this year than we did last year. And, and you know, in hindsight, we felt like we we came out of training camp and you know we, our start of the season last year was a success. And um, you know, hopefully, we can emulate that again this year.
Joey, you got anything? You got anything? You're good? Okay. Thank you.